Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. Alright, welcome to the video. Sorry for my absence. I'll explain in one second what went on. So, as I was recording some lessons and reviews last week, um, my computer was locking up and I knew that I had my hard drive nearly full. This is an amazing comic we're going to look at today, or, or manga. It's by Yuchi Akuma Kura and it's called Jing, King of Bandits or King of Bandit Jing. Um, I actually own all these books. I'll get into that in a second. But anyway, but yeah, so my hard drive was was getting full, and I um, started to back it up. No big deal. I just figured it was getting laggy because I, I had literally like 30 gigs left of like four terabyte, something like that, five terabyte hard drive. And um, as I was backing stuff up, I realized that I think I had a virus on top of the fact that um, something was going on. So I, I bought an external hard drive, um, and I had been backing everything up, but uh, it's just, it's really time consuming. And uh, on top of it, when I'm transferring files, um, you know, the computer gets super laggy and acts up. So I, I couldn't really film videos while I was doing it. So that was, that was what was up. I had been busy, but uh, that was, it was just my computer was completely tied down. So anyway, we're going to get into this. So I'm going to give credit where credit's due. At Wildstorm, artist Adam Archer uh, had gotten one of these um, books. And uh, I saw it and I was like, this stuff is so cool. It's a really interesting blend of like, to me... Uh, really nice uh, like manga style art uh, it's got like a little bit of a Capcom feel and at times I was getting like a Mignola vibe from his stuff so it's it's a really really cool blend of things and uh, yeah over a period of probably two years I hunted down every one of these little single books which was not easy pre eBay um, but uh, yeah and the, the artist kind of just vanished but it's funny each issue is called bottle and uh, there's some alcohol references and stuff in the book, but but overall, I I I, I know that I think they actually even did an anime of it, but uh, the the comics are where it's at, or the the manga. So all right, let's get to this. There might be some weird random stuff uh, open in here, but I love his style. It's really really um, uh, it's cartoony. I mean, it it's just great looking stuff. It's got almost like a yellow submarine Beatles kind of vibe too. It's really really trippy, but this stuff really had a big impact on me. I absolutely love the art in these books, and uh, it gave me that like panicky feeling where you're like, oh man, I need to get this. Like I can't get it soon enough. Uh, and uh, anyway, there's a lot of random stuff. I opened the whole book that I found online, so um, uh, there, there'll be like weird little artifacts and stuff as I open this stuff that I'll, I'll just close but you, you can see like look at how cool the drawings are it's just got a ton of personality this does actually have you know what this does have a little Beatles yellow, yellow, yellow submarine vibe I never really noticed it when I originally got in the book but that totally looks like that art um but yeah, you know, it's 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 interesting because I've I've done so many reviews and lessons now, and um, one thing that I think is kind of exciting for the YouTube channel in particular is um, my channel keeps growing, and the the fact of the matter is is I have the the best ideas for the YouTube channel are really like forthcoming. Um, I think book reviews, it's a little bit of a dead end street. I mean, so many people do it now and have been doing it for a while that it's like, it's a fun, I think I, people seem to like my descriptions of the books and feel like I have something interesting to sort of add to the experience of checking them out. This is a great little panel right here. I love, um, a lot of the artists I've been looking at recently, I've been getting really great um, requests and recommendations for stuff to check out. I always love how they do like bricks and stuff like that. It never feels overly ruled out and yet it's still tight. But um, yeah, so so doing my lessons and reviews, I came up with a really, really cool concept for a series of videos um, that I briefly touched on maybe a year or two ago, but I'm going to get back into it because I think um, not only will it get tons of views for myself, which is obviously great and it'll grow the channel, um, but, but it'll, it'll really help a lot of people. And that's what I, I kind of love. I love being able to, um, enable, uh, people that I meet online to, you know, reach their goals and dreams. I think it's a fun part of it. And, uh, you can see how good this, this artist is. 
And this, I honestly think that he did all on his own. I don't think this is a team of artists that did it. This feels very personal. There's, I think, two or three series that he did of this book. Um, the art is pretty consistent all the way through, and um, he's kind of vanished, I think, since then. He hasn't really done much, um, really, since then. But, uh, you know, you can see a little, like, what I was saying with, like, the Mignola thing, too. It's just a really, really fun style. Great, great art. Like, look at that little guy. <laughs> and it's it's got a little bit of a dark feel to it. See this? Kind of Mignola-ish, right? I told you guys, I don't pick garbage for these videos. Only the best of the best for my YouTube friends. I had to come back with something strong. Believe it or not, there was a little bit of... Um, it, it, it was like I had a little... Uh, I had, to, I had to dig deep for what I was going to bring. <laughs> People had been kept recommending Berserk. I've, I actually did a video on Berserk. I'll definitely return to that. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to pull something out of my little bag of tricks. These books are great. They're very tiny, though. That's the only thing is, is they're just... I sometimes wish that the manga stuff was reproduced a little bigger. But, you know, you get a nice big scan like this. It's actually a, a pleasant way to, to look at it. Oh, I love this guy's stuff. It's so cool. It's so creepy in a fun way. <laughs> it doesn't remind me of Bacolo, literally, but, but like, he's got that level of creativity, like a Chris Bacolo, where it's it's you can just see it kind of bubbling over anything that he draws. I did a review of someone today that actually has that. I told them, I said, I said, you've got something natural in your work that people can never learn, which is, uh, uh, it's, it's an interesting thing. It's just a, it's like a little, little something, something, a little extra style, a little more personality. It's not easy to do, but hard work will always persevere that's the key is anybody that sticks to it can draw really good there's a couple of comic book artists that i follow on instagram that have been working pro for a long time but i wouldn't consider their art the most interesting art in the world but they draw so good it's interesting just because of the level of skill so you know you can filter through my 1700 follows on instagram and try to figure out who it is now <laughs> A little bit of quirky is good. You don't want to be too quirky. Well, you can. It's it's your own call. But but uh, there's a point where you tip the scales away from you, and then you become too much style. This is great. The character designs in this book are so cool, too. So we'll skip some of the more simple pages or stuff that's maybe not as interesting. But you can see how nice this is. There's a warm quality, too, that I always seem to gravitate towards. And, you know, again, I, I said that one of the sort of predicaments that I had visualizing blaster kid was how exactly were different ways to achieve this level of value without having to cross hatch everything because i think that that can look very overdone so you could go pure black and white you don't need to use screen tones um to get there but um you know you could use wash or copic multi-liners or even just digitally add in gray value but um yeah, it's just weird because without it, these pages will still look nice. Let's see if I can try to remove it on this side a little bit. But, uh, you know, Emanuela does it, but then you, you end up spotting more black. And then that, that can kind of take your work in a different way. But you could see how much more washed out this looks. And there's still quite a bit of gray in there. But uh, yeah, it just has a different character that, um, you know was always a struggle for me because I thought stuff like this looked so beautiful. It had such a great warm, like I'll, you'll hear me say warm. What's interesting is when I was thinking Travis, we were doing um, a, um, it was a piece with Voodoo, probably from the second issue. And uh, I, I had inked the eyes and um, I don't remember if we had a conversation about it or something like that, but, but uh, there was this, dusky warm quality around the eyes and a lot of times he would achieve it sort of by putting wash on things but when we didn't use wash it was a level of like fine lines that um really kind of seemed to bring it out but but you know you can't do fine lines everywhere one it would take forever i mean you could do it but you would draw one book every five years or you can figure out a way to like you know expedite that that look and it could be done with color if it's a color book it won't really matter this is really cool I know people have been asking me to do Blam and um, 
Abra, I think it is. I, I have those books. I mean, I actually own the books. I think he's great. So we'll definitely hit on some of that stuff. Biomega is all really, really cool. I love, the, I love that art. But as you can see, I, I love a lot of stuff. I love it all. No, <laughs> that actually would not be the case. <laughs> That's really cool. I like that he didn't put any details on the face at all. I think that looks great. This is funny, too. Do you see how the the, um, the structure of this character really changed here? That's cool, too. That's a nice down shot. See, aren't you guys glad I'm back? These are all these other channels. They do, they do these reviews. Not with the personality of me. We know that. <laughs> My cats are napping, or they would be fighting for you guys. I've already shot like three hours with a video today for lessons and reviews, so um, they're wore out. They've already caused trouble in other videos. <laughs> it's like, stop fighting. <laughs> These guys are cool. Yeah, these are little tiny books, though, when you get the originals. That's the only bummer. I got lazy and just opened the whole folder I have this in. I didn't want to pick all the, the JPEGs. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, and I had mentioned in another video, um, there was an artist that I had found online when I first, first, first got online in like 2000. His name was Locke, L-O-C-K-E, and uh, someone solved the mystery. They found him on ArtStation. He goes by his full name. I can't remember what it was, but uh, he had done a little bit of work for Dreamwave, a book called Echo, and then um, he did uh, another book that I had gotten before that. I can't think of the name off the top of my head, and uh, I always really liked his art. It was like a very young version of like uh, Shiro kind of thing and uh, I always wondered what happened to him but uh, he kind of drifted away from the original style he was doing when he was I guess first doing his samples or whatever so still cool to know that that person's out there so thank you for solving that mystery for me this is cool I love this that, that eagle arm thing is very very kick ass super super creative this is such a great little panel You can get that t that tiny bit of a Mignola vibe in there. And I think it's effective. It's like it doesn't reek of Mignola, and yet it, it, it has that vibe. It's interesting how Mike has owned such a big slice of of graphic art, you know? It's, it's fascinating how artists can do that. It's like they cut out like a niche, and if you even go even slightly towards it, it, it generally will look sort of like you are maybe like kind of doing them, which might not be the case, but... You know, this is cool. I think a lot of the checkered board and these striped pants and stuff is why it kind of reminded me a tiny bit of Bacalo, because it's like a Bacalo trope. And then here's the alcohol reference. I, you know, for me, based on the art, I would consider this an all-age book, but I don't know if the content... I think some of mine are honestly not even in English that I have, so I don't know if I've ever read it. I just always enjoyed the art, but uh, I, yeah, I'm not 100% sure if this story is for kids. So if you're young, just look at the pictures. <laughs> it's not. It's definitely not overly violent or anything like that. It's more quirky. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, these totally look like the yellow submarine, the meanies, or whatever they're called, blue meanies. These guys are cool. Hunt down the cherub. I don't think that there's too many bandaging uh, videos on YouTube, honestly. Oh, yeah, this is cool. You can see how much smaller he is here, though. Do you see his structure? He got, like, kind of teeny. This is great. That was really cool. Really, really nice. Man, that's so awesome. This is nice, too. See, I love stuff like this. Man, that looks really neat. But... My goal is to do traditional art. It was funny. I, I saw something in the last few days... 
and someone was talking about it. Oh, it was Jim Murray, the artist Jim Murray, who did the um, Batman Demon and Drown Town and stuff like that. And he does a lot of video game design work now, which is why you don't really see him as much on um, line or doing comics. He's, he's kind of got like a Bisley style. He, he has other influences, but but uh, think Simon Bisley, Batman, Judge Dread painted type work, and you'll have a good idea what his work looks like. He's worth Googling. Jim Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y. Uh, he was saying that, that even though when he does his video game work, like design and stuff like that, he's sort of forced to use more digital. He always seems to drift back to traditional um, when he... Uh, you know when he can control the workflow more with with design for games and stuff like that there's so many corrections to do it traditionally would just be nuts you know you're gonna want to kill yourself just trying to deal with that you know where it's like they're like we like this but could it be like could you turn him three feet to the left and you're gonna be like oh spent all this time drawing this at least in digital you can sort of whack it out faster do more iterations this guy's cool <laughs> That's so awesome. It's like Dr. Robotnik. He's got Mickey Mouse sized feet. Okay, let's see what we got here. Yeah, this stuff is fun. It's got like a hip quality to it. It's like. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. It would look great colored. I would rarely say that with some books, but this could actually look really, really beautiful, fully colored. Man. It definitely has a vibe where it would work. Look at the dragon. The artist got better, too. I mean, there, definitely you can see a growth curve in the art as they went along. And then it kind of, it sort of settled back down. I guess, you know, deadlines and stuff like that can affect it. But, uh, yeah, it was interesting get, picking up the books. It took a long time, I'm telling you. I think I got, like, w one or two pretty quickly. And then I, they may have even been coming out at that time, but but like three, four, five, and six were, took forever for me to find them. Um, this is really cool. Love this panel. This panel is great. But yeah, get excited about this new series that I'm going to work on. I'm going to test it out for a few weeks. I may even test it out on Patreon. That might be an idea. Is is I'll do like a week or two on my own and see how it goes. And then if it's going well, um, I'll start uploading it. I'm gonna be recording all the content. What I'm saying is like when I edit it down, like how am I gonna present it? I'm gonna definitely do it because I think it's worth worth it. When you have an idea like that, like you come up with something you go, that's actually cool. And I'm not seeing people really doing that right now. You gotta, you gotta jump on it because two weeks from now, someone will be doing it. <laughs> like the, at least that's what I found. It's, it's crazy how often I'll come up with an idea and then KFAB will do it literally like two days later. I'm like, how the fuck does this keep happening? I don't have anything against those guys, but it is really, really funny. I was like, it's it's happened three or four times in like the last month where I'll, I'll go, oh, you know, I should do this. That would actually be pretty cool. It happened yesterday, in fact. I had this very weird, bizarre, old comic collection that I was going to go through that was like stuff that nobody would know the artist but the, the art was pretty interesting and sure enough they did a video of it i was like wow what is going on in the universe <laughs> so the joke is ideas come in threes when you when you come up with an idea that's quote unquote original there's two other people on the planet that somehow reacted to the same thing whatever it was that little that little <laughs> That little sound you heard from the wind and leaves that, that sent you in another direction. This is great. Yeah. And then uh, if you don't hop on it, someone else will do it. And then you're like, damn, should have done it. This is great. This looks like, um, that's interesting. Uh, like he really went crazy with the buildings. Like <laughs> They're swooping. That is awesome. I love stuff like this. So simple, but so effective. And we can see a little perspective there with the boxes. They're not just like side views. 
yeah, hopefully this is fun and and it feels really good to be back on YouTube. I was actually excited. I, I wasn't sure what time I was going to shoot this video, but I, I wanted to warm up and get my brain sort of moving. So uh, I did a couple of videos before I shot this, but is each time I would finish a, a lesson or review, I would go like, is it time? And as I was ramping up for it, I was getting excited. I was excited to be back talking to all of you. This is great. This is a very, very cool uh, panel spread. The Children of Paradise. Yeah, you know what? I'm almost positive my first book is not in English. I, I think I actually checked them out. I've got, I think, three in my office right now. And then some other ones are out in my storage. I should bring them in. Be fun to look at more. Oh, look at that. That's so neat. Uh, let's get it a little smaller. Oh, I should be in full screen mode. I apologize. See, it's been a while. This is this is what that's the people probably yelling at the screen. Full screen mode, Rich, please. <laughs> that's awesome. I love those. The, the packs on the back look great. But again, you can see how just the, that little bit of screen tone with the white on top, it just makes it look fun. It gives it a little, a little, but you know, again, if this is colored, is, is it necessary? I would argue no. And I want to do color work most of the time. So It's funny because I, I haven't really followed much comic stuff the last two weeks in terms of like comic news and stuff. But uh, I was actually contacted. This will be this is some good gossipy stuff. I was contacted by Rich Johnson, <laughs> believe it or not, through Facebook. He shot me a private like an instant message, private note, and he was he was asking me about Michael Gray. <laughs> I didn't even know who he was talking about. He's like, what's the deal with Michael Gray? And I'm like, who the, I'm like, I, I have no idea who you're even talking about. This is, this, you'll laugh at this. This is pretty funny. So he's the person that I guess wrote two of the Batman stories that Ryan Benjamin and I did. Had no idea. I didn't know who the writer was. I, I ne had never read the scripts. I just, I get the art from Ryan. I ink it and I'm done. <laughs> That's my part of the process. Um, and uh, I guess it's, it's, there's a theory that it's a pseudonym for someone. I have no idea who, but uh, yeah, I couldn't really help him out, but that was kind of funny. I'm not actually, I'm not to be negative, but I'm not a huge fan of sort of how Rich Johnson operates. I, I think he's been more detrimental to comics than uh, like, you know, uplifting. <laughs> so, but I'm not gonna be an asshole. And I, I didn't think the, 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 the question didn't cross any sort of weird line with me. Um, but yeah, I really don't know. So, so apparently someone that I'm working with could be that they, they could be someone that they're not. I don't know. <laughs> I was interesting is I, I meant to go check the email chain and see if, um, uh, he was even a part of it. He or she, whoever it is, I, I couldn't remember. Sometimes they CC everyone. Like I'm working with, um, Dan Jurgens and Ryan Benjamin right now on Nightwing, just doing a couple of issues. It, I had agreed to them months ago. Um, but uh, these goggles are great. Um, I like this, too. This almost has like a Minecraft vibe. This is way before Minecraft, but you see what I'm saying? <laughs> That's funny. Wow, what a trip. It totally looks like a Minecraft tree. I want to go up there and fix it up a little bit. Sure, trim it down in spots. Remove some cubes. But uh, yeah, I should check and see if... Um, there's a CC thing on it, but I don't know. It didn't seem like a very big deal. So apparently one of the stories people liked, I saw, um, it was totally random, but, but kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Cool. Be the right word. Uh, diversity in comics reviewed the comic and he was complimentary to it. I was like, Hey, that's cool. I'm famous. I'm on a big YouTubers channel for a comic review. <laughs> Oh, goodness. So, hopefully this was fun. 
it feels good to be back i probably won't do a video tomorrow but i'll try to get another one up for friday and then give me recommendations for super fun sunday if you want and uh like i said i'm gonna get cracking on that little project that i have for youtube that i think will be really really fun and uh we'll get a lot of people excited about not only what i'm doing but also i think for themselves so it should be cool this is nice this looks like a little like um oh, i can never remember his name it's like a Chilean artist that's really, really good. Chilean. <laughs> okay, let's start wrapping this up. I gotta shoot another, uh, another video. Today's like an all video day. This is rare. I've I've had one other day where I had to shoot like eight or nine hours of videos. <clears throat> but. Uh, yeah, it usually happens like once a month. It's it's kind of fun. I mean, it's it's interesting for me because I have to jump from from one person's style to the next and kind of either review it or give them a lesson. It's 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 actually quite challenging, but uh, I find it rewarding for a few reasons, and and you learn a lot from it too. So this is great. Hey, you know, it's really interesting. I wonder if Minecraft got got sort of a vibe from this. I mean, it's probably just a coincidence, but that's interesting. Where did Minecraft originate from? Is it? Is it's not? It wasn't made in the United States, right? It's like something else. These guys are cool. It's like Sweden or Norway or something. I can't remember. I think at one point I knew. Actually, I wish I could play Minecraft more. It's pretty fun. I had this theory of what I wanted to do in Minecraft. Is I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to play survival mode. And see if I could build like an underground bunker where no one could find me and I could do like crazy stuff, but like um, hide the like there would be no door. I would just dig into grass and then put the grass back and and then create this huge labyrinth underneath the ground and and see how often people would stumble upon it. It would be it would be kind of creepy, fun, fun, creepy. Minecraft can be intense if you if you play it right. <laughs> She's like, really intense? Uh, it's not the vibe I get from Minecraft. I do. My imagination makes it that way. <laughs> oh my. Let's see. Oh yeah, I remember this. This is giving me like bio. Bioshock, that one with the like that weird <laughs> like the confederate I don't even know what it was it was very weird it was like the third Bioshock game second it's, it's pretty awesome I watched a walkthrough of it on YouTube Uncle Sam and all that weird stuff this is I like this shot a lot but you know what I mean? Like, how are you going to do... Like, like if you want to control the black and white art. Uh, you know... You could do it with an airbrush. I think this is the end. Oh, yeah, look at this. This is cool. I always like this. But again, it's got that Mignola feel. There's a there's a piece that Mignola did. It's a pinup in the back of one of the Farford and the Grey Mauser books. It has a vibe. It's like a guy hanging from a tree, I think, or something. I'm sure it's just a coincidence on this, but I'm just saying it reminds me of him. This is all very, very cool. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. Let's see how much further we've got. Oh, we still got a lot of files open. All right, let's, we'll do like three more. I'm going to just pick something that's super crazy. I like the door. Man, that's awesome. <laughs> This guy's cool looking. Yeah, man, it looks so nice. Just would not look the same, black and white. No gray. No gray. <laughs> <laughs> what to do? Look, he's like, screen tones or no screen tones. Look, his hands are crazy. I like them though. Does anyone watch, um, uh, 
There's a guy that does gold digging, panning for gold on YouTube. I watch his videos, but there's people that go down like old mines and stuff like that. It's pretty interesting stuff. It's dangerous. Ah, uh, that's so cool. I went down that rabbit hole like a year ago and I would watch all these like gold mining and people that explore abandoned mines videos. It's pretty fun. <clears throat> there's, there's a pretty good channel on urban exploration too. These two brothers from like Sweden or something. I don't remember where they're from, Denmark, maybe? It's pretty good. If you search for it, you would definitely be able to find it. They have one of the bigger sort of urban exploration channels. But beautiful homes, they've been abandoned. It's always, like, it's cool, just sort of mental imagery. Derelict mansions and stuff like that. It's fun to look at. S is really cool. But yeah, you can get inspiration from a bazillion different things. So, you know, always have your feelers out. This is really cool. Speaking of mines. Man, that's a great little panel. That looks very Bacalo. Not saying that, that he ripped it off from Bacalo, but it reminds me of Steampunk. What? What's this? Alright, well, we're wrapping this book up. I think we did good. Alright. It feels good to be back, but don't call the comeback. And I will talk to you guys all, probably not tomorrow, but the next day. So enjoy the video. Smash the like if you can. And uh, thank you to all the new subs. And if you are curious about learning a lot about drawing, I have Patreon. There's hundreds and hundreds of videos up there. And um, a dollar gets you full access. So check it out. All right. Later. Bye.